Hey there, YouTube. AJ here. And I can skip the gift. Well, sort of. <laughs> so realistically, I'm not supposed to be skating. Not cleared yet. And I'm really just here to update y'all that follow me for my skate content on what has been going on and why there has been no skate content. Back in the end of November, I had a slam where I was doing a front pop shove it, landed in the back seat, slipped out, and when I came down, I put my arm out weird, jammed up my left shoulder. Well, take a look at this. Wow. wasn't the slam that took me out that one hurt for a few days after two or three days I was starting to feel normal again and after a week I was felt like I was hundred percent back my shoulder wasn't hurting at all I felt completely normal I felt a hundred percent ready to skate again so I did a week so a week to ten days after that slam I went skating on a friend's mini ramp I don't have a lot of practice skating mini ramps. I'm not good at it. I'm not even below average at it. I suck. So I was trying to learn how to skate a mini ramp and I'd been there for a while. I finally got where I could do more than drop in, hit a wall and come back to the other wall. And I actually put four walls together, which was a big deal for me. I was kind of happy. So maybe I got a little sloppy because I was kind of celebrating. I was going for that fifth wall, but like I said, I got a little sloppy and I slipped out again. And I fell the exact same weird way where I put back, back my left arm and it got all jammed up. Except for this time, I knew immediately I was really hurt. My left shoulder and arm, they just kind of hung limp. I knew nothing was broken, I knew it was all muscular, but I, could, I could, couldn't get a lot of mo movement out of my arm, especially my upper arm, my shoulder area. I could move my hand and wrist okay, but like to lift or to put my arm up or move around hurt like crazy. Now, I actually tore this same rotator cuff once before, and this felt exactly the same, so I was pretty sure that I tore my rotator cuff and I didn't go to the doctor because the last time I tore my rotator cuff I went to the doctor spent a bunch of money just to find out all I really needed was physical therapy because it wasn't torn that bad so I did the same thing I started doing my physical therapy that I'd done before and it got a little better I got to where I could get some movement without pain and I could get out to like about right here going sideways and I could lift my arm up to about here but it was still hurting, and that was after about two months. So I thought, you know what, I better start looking into going to the doctor. And after initial review, they kind of agreed, thought I, was, thought I probably had torn my rotator cuff. So they scheduled a CAT scan. And it took a month to get the CAT scan scheduled. And I went to the CAT scan, and the people doing the CAT scan said, well, this isn't gonna show nothing for a rotator cuff. So we didn't do the CAT scan and went back to my doctor and they scheduled an MRI which took another month to get scheduled so I got my MRI back and yes I have torn my rotator cuff but that's not the main issue the main issue is the gap between my where my shoulder bone comes down and the other bones in my shoulder and this muscle goes through that gap between them that gap in my shoulder is pretty narrow and while I did have some minor rotator cuff tears that impingement of that gap what happened was 
when I fell, that muscle got slammed between the two bones and it's been inflamed and swollen ever since and it just won't go away. And even to the point where like I can't even sleep, like laying down there, I, there's no really good way for me to get comfortable. So my sleeping has been horrible. So I take my MRI, I go to the orthopedics. They tell me all this stuff about the narrow gap in my shoulder, the tear in my rotator cuff. And he tells me my options are therapy and to take a high strength anti-inflammatory to start with, or we can go straight to cortisone shots and potentially surgery. But he said really surgery is not gonna be that much of a help because the tear isn't the main issue so at least i don't have to do surgery and have three four six months of recovery from that so i'm working on my therapy now uh, i didn't get cortisone shots because they say the more you get cortisone shots the less effective they are and he didn't want to jump straight to that because long term it may make them ineffective and i may need them later but for now we're just going with high strength anti-inflammatory and therapy that I'm doing at home on my own so I've already it's only been a few days and I'm already feeling improvements so that's good um, why am I telling you all this well one hopefully if you're still listening you know I'm telling you this because some people follow me for my skate content and I haven't done any skate content in a long while that's getting ready to change I'm not going to be showing a lot of skating because I basically have not been skating for six months out of fear of her making this worse. Uh, now that I got a path, I will be skating again and I know I can, I can skate except for I can't fall on this. So skating is going to be pretty tame for quite some time, but I want to start building my endurance back up and getting back my balance and things like that. So I will be skating going forward. but. I won't be showing any skating of me really because it's gonna be pretty boring for anybody watching it unless you know you're a lot worse than I am I guess anyway what I will be doing though I've got this big pile of lumber and this long skinny piece of faux marble and that shorter piece of faux marble I've got a lot more wood and metal so I plan to start making more skate obstacles what am I going to be making? One, I want to rework my metal rail into an adjustable all-metal base. Uh, the wood blocks that I used in that video to attach it to, it, it moves around too much and I, I'm just not happy with it. Two, I want to take this long piece of marble and make a ride-on curb. And by that I mean like slanted sides up to the top it'll be a ledge slash a curb probably about i don't know that tall maybe 10 to 12 inches tall but you'll be able to ride up kind of slappy style i'm going to make that more gentle than the slappy pad i made so i'm going to do that that way i have an easier way to learn to get into nose slides tail slides ride on grind type of stuff so uh i think that'll be fun so i'm going to build that I'm going to build another quarter pipe, a little taller than my first quarter pipe. So I'd be able to face this one another and kind of have a small mini ramp to work with. And speaking of small mini ramps, I'm going to make an even smaller, call it a micro mini ramp. That's only going to be about three foot wide, eight foot long, short enough. It'll go underneath my Jeep when it's parked in the garage. So I'm going to park over top of it. So I'm going to build that to go and practice just really basic getting used to mini ramp things i think it'll be fun for a while uh it'll be something i can do if it's raining outside and you know low risk of falling because it's going to be it's only going to be about 10 inches tall so i think that'll be a fun build and a neat build especially if you got kids wanting to learn to ride mini ramps that would be cool and I'm gonna... yeah the bigger piece of marble this one right here i'm going to build me a small ledge to work on I think that's about it. Uh, oh, I'm going to build myself a kicker. I'm, I want a small launch ramp, you know, something that's not a straight ramp. It's got a little curve to it to learn to get a little bit of air off of. So I'm going to build myself a small kicker to 
start learning how to get a little bit of air. So I'm going to be doing all those projects coming up. And that way I'll have everything ready to go when I am ready to start back skating full strength again, which I'm hoping will be by mid-July, hopefully. I don't know. So thank you if you're still watching, still subscribed. I appreciate that. I hope you stay subscribed for my skate content. If you don't, if you're watching it for my other content, like my hot rod and stuff, you know, just click past this video, which you probably already have if you've made it this far. But anyway, until I get to building these skate obstacles uh, and I get back to really skating again, hopefully by the middle of this summer. Later, YouTube.